I'm Josh Meredith, I am with Cardis Audio, and I am the marketing director as well as the guy who does anything else that needs to be done around the shop because we're a small company and we all kind of do a lot of stuff. There's certain building blocks uh, that make something a Cardis cable. It starts with copper, our own copper. is pr produced our own proprietary method. There's only one facility in the world that will do it, and they do it exclusively for us. And it's a method that George took from kind of the way things used to be done, modified to make better, and we make copper in a way that is unavailable to anywhere else in the world. And so we, we sell a lot of that to other manufacturers, and of course we use it in our own products. Once you've got the copper, then you make a conductor out of it. Cardis conductors are all multi-stranded Litz conductors in which each individual uh, strand of, so uh, of copper is, is single poly nylon coated to protect it from oxidation and to prevent crosstalk within the conductor. They're multi-stranded. There's dozens if not hundreds of little tiny wires inside each one of our conductors and sized according to the golden ratio, which is 1 to 1.618 from the center out. So you have the tiniest strands in the middle, they graduate according to the golden ratio as they work their way out towards the outer, uh, outer diameter of the cable. And this is a micro resonance control technique that goes back to the early days of Cardis back in 1987. George would tell you that almost anything we do was because he was more or less forced into it. Uh, he was designing cables and realized that the limiting factor became the connectors because they weren't made to his specifications. So he designed spades and RCAs and the connectors that were being, you know, that he needed at the time to be used on Cardis cables. And then other manufacturers came knocking on the door and said, gee, that's a nice RCA. Uh, could I buy a few? And, and then they would say, but I want mine to be gold plated. And he'd say, well, you got to buy a thousand, but I'm going to buy a thousand and we're both going to have gold plated RCAs. <laughs> so it kind of, people would come to us, come to George and say, this is what I need. And he'd say, well, I could use that too. And we developed a whole product line. And of course we use our own connectors uh, whenever possible on our cables and we continue to develop more. We didn't used to make power connectors. Now we make a, a range of power connectors. Uh, but you know, it just, you need to have, well, there's no point in having a good cable if you're going to put mediocre connectors on the end. So out of necessity, he developed his own line of connectors and that's become a huge part of who we are now. We don't design products for a price point. We don't decide we need an entry level cable. We develop products and figure out where they're going to fit into the price in, in, into the into our into our world and then how can we make them fit into a price point that makes sense for what they're for. Uh, a lot of our entry level stuff is meant to pair with equipment that could use a little warming a warming up, a little more musicality. A lot of uh, today's high-tech multi-channel AV receivers are very high performance in a sense and they measure amazing but they can be a little grainy, a little edgy. They don't have a lot of the musicality that the really nice stuff out there has. And we make products that pair well with those where you still get the neutrality and the, and the dynamics, but at the same time, they take away some of that edginess that makes that gives you the listening fatigue after a while where you just can't listen anymore or you keep turning it down. I think a lot of our customers find themselves turning it up a little louder because we, it's a very listenable product range. Uh, as you work towards the, the high end, the, the extreme cables that we make, we presume the person using them has a no compromises system. Their speakers, their amplification, their electronics, and probably a room are dedicated to perfection and you don't need any tuning with the cable. What you need is a cable that gets out of the way and doesn't do anything. So we make those too. So if you're at the entry level and your system is probably a little compromised because of budget and where it is in your home, we have cables like that and they're fairly affordable for what they are. If you've got the extreme system, the over the top, no holds barred, no compromises system, we make products for that as well and they perform accordingly. I think a lot of times the consumer is comforted by knowing that they can stay within a family of cables. In a family of cables, there's only so many things that an interconnect can share with a power cable. They're vastly different by design, but it is comforting to know that they are budgeted such that if you have a system that Iridium speaker cable makes sense for, chances are Iridium interconnect would also make sense in that mix, as would Iridium power. That said, you don't have to upgrade all at once. If you decide it's time to do something, I'm gonna keep my same electronics, but I wanna try a different speaker cable. You might try Parsec speaker cable, you might try Clear Sky speaker cable, and keep your Iridium interconnects and your Iridium power. And then at some point, upgrade one of the other ones somewhere else. They don't have to share the name. They don't have to go together. All of our stuff works well with itself. And I always encourage people, put your money in the cable that's always getting used. You're always using your speaker cable. Maybe you have a Blu-ray player you don't use that often. 
go a little more budget on that one. If you're using your turntable or your high resolution streamer all the time like we do, that's another place to put your budget. That's where to put your money when it comes to your cable.